Okay, I'm gonna give you a little walk through my homeschool dashboard, which is what I based the template um, off of. If you are interested in a template for getting this set up for yourself, you can find the link in the description box below. So I have a section for curriculum, I, and then I have our year at a glance, and I just kind of threw in um, our fall rhythm and our overall um, calendar, which is, these are linked to, um, and that'll make more sense in a minute why it's up there. So this is my year at a glance. We generally plan things um, like theme type stuff for morning basket and like just general books that we're reading on a monthly basis. Um, and so these themes up here in gray are based off of our Oak Meadow curriculum. We're doing Oak Meadow one this year. These orange ones are um, like preschool type themes, themes that I'm pulling into morning time and just some general activities we're doing. Yellow is our artist of the month and purple is our music study for the month and then pink is ballet. So all of these are linked to a master tag database. So if I click on apples, it will bring me to apples and I can get a quick look at all the books that I have saved, all the ideas I have saved um, for Apple Books. And this is a mix of books that I own and also books that are, um, we don't own that book, so I'm not sure why it says home, so I should change that. Books that are from the library. Let's see if that one's in there. Yep, library. And so it's a really quick way for me to know what books do I need to gather. Um, and the template um, itself will have a um, like need to locate filter so like for example you could sort this by which ones are library books and then you could quick go let's see we'll add that in here where it's book and and the location is library so now I know okay I need to go reserve these from the library We go back to where we were where were we on the dashboard okay so I can also click in here and get a glimpse of the month in general so here's September here's our main topics this is a synced block so anything I put in here will change on that main year at a glance and then here are my linked databases and this will all be kind of set up for you um, in the template and you can get a tutorial for like how to make it work for you. And our autumn books, our Jackson Pollock books, um, Vivaldi Four Seasons, and then I have our Oak Meadow stuff down here below. So this template in my dashboard and the main reason I switched over to Notion was to use the database feature for databasing books that I own and books that I have ideas for so that I don't forget them because oftentimes I will see something on Instagram or the web in general and I'll like screenshot it or save it so that I can remember to pull, pull it when we get to that topic but then I don't have any organized system for like remembering where I saved it. Um, and so this is my database for books essentially and I don't have all the books in here I just I've been entering them kind of as we go there you know I'd love to sit down and like you know catalog every book that we have but like that's just not practical um, so just the other day I spent you know 20 minutes in the morning going through all the books that I had reserved from the library and just what I know that we have and I added them in real quick and it did not take that long Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through changing this. Um, right now I have the October page pulled up and I am changing the pre-installed, I guess, um, topics to be what we are doing. So first I changed the title to pumpkins, then I added a tag, I changed the filter um, to where the tag would show pumpkins. And then it will automatically pull any pumpkin books that I have already entered into my resource library. And doing the same thing here with family, changing the filter so it says where the tag is family. We're going to come down to the next one. We're going to change this to Massachusetts, and it's going to say, quick pause. I forget why there was a pause there. La, la, la. 
I was probably looking up how to spell Massachusetts because let's be honest, I still can't spell it. Okay, so we have Massachusetts. And I'm coming back up to my main topics. What's next? Um, animal migration needs tracks. And so for this one, I need to add three filters. So I'm going to change it to where the filter is tags. And I'm adding a tag for tracks. And then I'm adding the tag for migration. And I change that to or instead of and because um, I don't think I have many things that are tagged both of them. And then while I'm doing this, I realize that I have a toy that is tagged incorrectly. And I will go and fix that in a minute. So when you are playing with the filters, you have to kind of be careful for the and and the or settings. So I'm going to quick change this. Oh, look, it's categorized the wrong way. Okay. Now we're going to use artist again, changing tag where the tag, changing the filter, excuse me, where the tag is Degas. And again, it's only pulling up the books I've already entered into the database. We're doing the same thing here with music, changing the title to Beatles, changing the filter to be where the tag is the Beatles. See, initially it pulled up um, like all the things. Okay, ballet, our ballet for the month was Cinderella. So I'm adding that in. And for this one, I have to add two you have to use an and filter, right? Because I want where the tag is Cinderella and I want it where the tag is ballet because we have a lot of Cinderella resources that are not specifically ballet. And for this one, we want just the ballet resources. And it's pulling up tags I already have in my ta master tag database. If it was a tag you didn't already have, you could create a new tag into your master tag database. Okay, we're doing the same thing for Massachusetts. Checking my main topic list, community, new tag button. This is from the filter, the um, template that I already have built for you. And so it'll just populate um, whatever you already have in your system. And if you don't have stuff in your system, you can go and add it in. And this doesn't take as much time as it might think. So right now what I'm doing is I'm updating my community tags. We're going to do community as part of Oak Meadow. So I am off screen um, Googling this title and dragging the picture for the book onto my desktop and then dragging that picture from my desktop onto the um, page right here where it says image. I'm doing the same thing for the post office book going to look up the post office book to get the image and I'm dragging the image from like Google images here. I'm going to show you how it works. Okay. We're over here on images and we want to make sure that we don't get the top ones because those are not a JPEG. You want the kind of the bottom one. So it wants to be a JPEG file and then you drag it into that area where the image is. Okay. Well, let's see what we do next. Okay, we're back in October. We're looking and we're thinking, okay, what do we need to do? Local geography. Oops, wrong button. Delete, go back, new tag. Okay, so we don't have a lot of books for local geography. Doing something on my other screen that we cannot see. La la la. Okay. Oh, we're moving on to pumpkins apparently. <laughs> okay. So I am right now in my Amazon shop so that I can pull all the pumpkin book images um, and adding them to our like resource database. So I will just have all these pumpkin books. So I'm quick typing the title, copying the author, pasting the author, dragging the image, adding the image and noting where they are stored. So I think some of the initial ones here I have, um, and then so that I'm just going to put there in storage because we store our books seasonally. Well, most of them, not all of them. Adding the illustrator as well. If you already have those in your database, it'll pull up and you can just click enter. Otherwise, you can add it as a new one. Again, 
just going through the process here. I think this took me about 10 minutes to get all of the pumpkin books in. Maybe not even 10 minutes. I really like having the location um, feature for this because I can then later filter. Is it in storage or is it in library at the library? If I filter it by library, then I get a list of exactly the books that I need to put on reserve. Sometimes I forget what I already have. And I am a visual person, so I really like having those pictures there. And I'm changing the view so that the card size is smaller. So you get three in a row instead of two in a row. Okay, so now you can see that I am going in and adding some resources that are not books. So for our Cinderella ballet unit, I wanted us to watch some of the full length versions of Cinderella. And fortunately, YouTube has a couple. So I found a couple on YouTube. I added them to our ballet playlist. Um, Y'all are welcome to check that out. I think I have a link in the bio on my Instagram. And so I am right now adding them on as a resource. So I'm looking at the type and I'm adding in YouTube and I'm saying the location is YouTube. I am adding tags for Cinderella and ballet. And I also Googled the full ballet, what it was, and I found a Google image for like an advertisement, either that or I took a screenshot of it. And I added that in for the image so that I would have something to show up on my morning time page, because again, I'm a very visual person. So I'm adding in the URL. When we go to watch this, I can either click off of my phone and screencast it to our TV, or I can pull it up from our YouTube playlist. I also, for some of the resources I have, um, I went in, like slow down 50 mindful moments in nature. I went in and added tags for like all of the topics that are in there because I always forget these reference books, like what is in them. Um, so using a master tag database has been really helpful for that because then I remember like, oh yeah, I can pull, you know, this book for animal tracks um, or needs or migration or whatever it is. And the same thing with like the Osborne Art Treasury. I have, um, I went in and tagged all of those. Um, our ballet, so some of the resources, we have a couple books for Cinderella in October, um, but I also found um, some full length uh, ballets on YouTube. And I am working on a YouTube playlist that I will share with you guys soon that has, um, you know, I'm, I'll just make public the ones that we're using. And so, um, nope we can come here and go and watch the movie so I don't forget where they are. So that's kind of just a quick look at um, how this template works and its basic functionality. Again, I am working on adding the like next level of like lessons and weekly planning and all of that. It's just going to take me a little bit more time. Um, so if you're interested in that, you know, you can either wait and then get that template that has everything in it, or you can start with this one and then I will provide like a tutorial for how to update this one um, so that you have all the features of the next one. Um, so you could start with this, you know, how to catalog all your books and your ideas essentially, and then um, move into the, you know, more extended form later on. So I hope that helps just kind of seeing like what is a, an option, um, like how this all works. Let's see, new month. Sometimes it takes a while for it to generate. There we go. So like this, I haven't planned November yet. So this is like the template that's all set up. And now I would just have to filter this by our main topics. So like, you know, I would type in my main topics and then add them here. And again, the tutorial um, goes over how to do all of this. I know one of the questions that folks have had is, okay, but I don't plan my month. So like, this is not helpful for me, um, which is a good question. So, so if you don't do 
monthly planning and you do terms or quarters or semesters or whatever, um, I also have a video for how to make adjustments to the template so that it works for the way that you plan. Um, because not everyone plans by month, um, but the same system can work for quarters or semesters or you know whatever it might be. So I hope that's helpful. Um, if you have questions, um, definitely drop them in the comments or there is a Facebook group um, that I will link in the comments as well that is about digital productivity for home educators and educators in general and that's a great place to ask questions about um, this kind of stuff. So alrighty, we're gonna end it with that.